Vietnam peoples and landscape has become the endless source of artistic inspiration. The Hanoi Old Quarter, where I'm standing, and the daily lives of the people here have been featured in many songs, in many literature work, on paintings and on photos by many people, especially foreigners. Now all of this photo book is the hard work of uh, the past 10 years of a French photographer since he's decided to move to Vietnam to live. So what have been captured in his photo and even what he has picked to print his photo on is a whole new perspective. And in this episode of Expert Living, we're going to get to know that French photographer and learn more about the lives here in Vietnam through his land. Daniel Fritschman came to Vietnam for the first time in the year 2000. His task was to work in an educational collaboration project between his French school and Vietnam's Chuvanan High School. From long time I wanted to change my life and uh, at that moment I decided uh, it will be Vietnam. Because when I was young in Paris I was on protest march against the war in Vietnam. You know, peace in Vietnam, peace in Vietnam. When I was about 18, I watched a movie, 17th Parallel, changed my life. <laughs> Just a week after his first arrival in Vietnam, he decided he had to return one day. He did come back to Hanoi in 2007 and has lived here ever since. Street photography, the art of capturing life, culture and humanity in a candid manner has become his full-time job here. Street lives, Vietnamese women, rural areas or victims of Agent Orange, all those are never-ending topics for Dian Passion. and probably finish my life in Vietnam. We are in an alleyway in the heart of Hanoi. Crowded, dark and narrow is what Danny and Fritchman described Hanoi alleyway. But it is at that crowded, dark and narrow alleyway that have fascinated Danny and Fritchman since been living in here. Hanoi streets are characterized by an endless network of alleyways with typical small width like these. Exploring Hanoi's alleyways, capturing moments of Hanoian lives in there are Diane Fritchman's hobby. For many times, Daniel walks down a new alleyway only to find himself in the courtyard of a residence, which has preserved old architecture. This alley is a really typical of Hanoi. You come inside and you know nothing. And suddenly, look, like a little jewel, a whole house made of, uh, with a decoration typical, with a chimney, you know, here. Yeah. It is a decoration probably inside the house. If you come inside, you have a great chimney for the, for the winter. <laughs> Through many wandering around streets in Hanoi, here is where Daniel Fritchman often takes a break. Mr. Guiz Peugeot's scooter repairing store on Loduk Street. 62-year-old Vu Van Gui has been repairing this type of vintage motorbike for about 30 years now, 
and is one of the few people in town able to do so. This man made a choice of life to, to work very well, very well, very high quality job and uh, cool and uh, always with the uh, customers he shares the love of Peugeot. Uh, uh, problem, no problem. <laughs> voilà. <laughs> Allez. Allez hop, toc. Voilà. Un chop toy. Voilà. Đầu tiên thì bác đến đây và có nói là tôi là người, người Pháp. Tôi muốn tìm hiểu về cái, cái người Hà Nội và cái xe Peugeot. À, bác đã đến đây rất nhiều lần. Xe mình sửa xe, xong bác chụp ảnh. Ngôn ngữ thì đúng là nó có bất đồng thật, nhưng mà đều là hiểu nhau. Out of the many photos Danian has taken of Gui, one best black and white portrait photo was chosen for Danian's solo exhibition in Paris in December 2016. Meet Mai Anh, a Vietnamese yoga teacher who has been helping Danian Fridgeman engage into local lives over the last years and paved the way for Daniel to fulfill his passion on street photography here in Vietnam. If it is not for Mai Anh, Danian would not have had access to these unknown corners across the country. Mình thì là một cái người mà không 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 biết nhiều về lĩnh vực nghệ thuật, không biết nhiều về uh, về ảnh, về tranh. Thế sau đó thì Daniel giới thiệu với mình về công việc của Daniel, về cái đam mê của Daniel. Và qua những cái đấy thì mình cũng thấy là mình thay đổi, mình thay đổi cách nhìn về cuộc sống. Bởi vì trước đây cuộc sống bận rộn, mình hối hả quá, mình uh, mải mê uh, làm những cái những cái công việc thường ngày mình quên đi một cái mảng của cuộc sống đấy là nghệ thuật. Today, Daniel Friedman and Mai Anh are taking another trip to Bắc Ninh Province, Dương Ổ Village, some 40 kilometers from Hanoi. This is where the traditional craft of making salt paper once flourished. Thì mọi người nói rằng bây giờ chỉ còn ở bên Bắc Ninh này này thì là mọi người còn duy trì cái nghề truyền thống là làm giấy đó thì bọn chị tới đây và cũng hỏi thăm dần hỏi thăm dần thì cũng tìm ra được một số gia đình vẫn còn duy trì nghề truyền thống. While most of Dương Ổ villagers have transferred to make tissue paper and wrapping paper as market demand for salt paper is low, these few households still uphold their traditions with some modernized techniques. This is one of the four remain households in the village that make salt paper. May I want to, to look something, to find something truly, truly Vietnamese pictures of Vietnam on Vietnamese paper. A good quality. It is what I am searching. I am searching something we say in English authentic. You know, really is our paper. When visiting Ngo Van Hien's house, Daniel brings along many of his photo works that already printed on Zaw paper. He's now looking for a new batch of Zaw paper for his new collection. Cái tranh đấy thì là mình cũng chưa nhìn thấy bao giờ. Hôm nay là ông Tây mang đến hay nhìn thấy lần đầu tiên. Còn tranh cổ động thì khách mua hàng người ta cũng mang về cho xem dạng sản phẩm. Nhìn cũng đẹp. Khách nước ngoài nói chung là nếu mà để khách nước ngoài dùng giấy gió thì cũng dùng ít. Dùng ít hơn là người Việt. Việt mình lại dùng cái loại giấy đấy nhiều hơn. The gió paper must have a suitable size that fits Daniel's photo printer must have four layers, and its surface must not be so rough. Color tone of the paper is another key factor. That is why Daniel himself has to travel that far for just a few dozen sheets of saw paper. Mình muốn làm ảnh thì mình 
phải tìm hiểu từ từ cái khâu mà mọi người làm giấy gió thế nào rồi ra một sản phẩm như thế nào chứ không đơn thuần là xuống đây mua một mẫu giấy và về để in. According to Ngô Văn Hiến, it takes more than a month to complete the 10 steps of making a batch of zo paper. From the bark of zo tree, paper fiber come out in the form of a thin sheet which is then pressed, dried, rolled and dried again by natural light on the wall like this. So he has a zó for the year. Yes. After over two years of experience, Daniel has printed about 200 photos on zó paper. The photography exhibition by Daniel Friedman, named Colors of Vietnam on Zay Zo, was opened in November 2016 in Hanoi. Daniel's pictures of daily life in Hanoi and Da Nang City are printed on Zo paper, giving these still images a rich, lifelike color and depth. Khi đi trên giấy gió, nó tạo một hiệu quả hoàn toàn khác. Còn cái ảnh chụp hoàn toàn, toàn khác ở đấy. Thế là từ cái sự hiện đại nó quay về sự dân gian. Đa nhiên là một nhà nhấp ảnh mà đã lợi dụng được cái chất liệu như thế. Đưa vào ảnh tôi cho là rất đáng quý. These two men, co-founder of the Hanoi-based Vietnam In Focus Photography Tour Company, were the ones who helped Daniel Friedman organize the exhibition. Vietnam in Focus is set up as a hub for local and foreigner photographers. Foreigners coming to Hanoi are always fascinated by daily kind of street life in Vietnam, you know. So this is a great street for it anyway. So to actually come into an exhibition and see that kind of uh, explored photographically is really interesting for them. The pictures are also very Vietnam, but the way it's presented is a very, very uh, Vietnamese way, I think. You know, I've not, I haven't seen bamboo frames in parchment paper with photography. I find that very original. Uh, I, I really like that. So how did you find out the other use of Zoll paper? And how did you come up with the idea of printing photos on Zoll paper? I uh, work in the old city, I see, very in um, Luang Van Khan. Luang Van Street. There is a shop, very, very old house in wood. Mm -hmm. I bought and I tried. So I began to print. Oh, I destroyed, I was near destroying my printer. <laughs> very, very hard. I don't stop like that. I wanted to go further. And so I find other, other sellers of the paper, and I try it, right. It is from two years. Now I know to, to print pictures on the paper. You have to take many precautions. You can know sometimes the picture is good, sometimes only half a picture, sometimes the, 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 the cannot. So I can say I use Mocham uh, Zaiza, I can print uh, 50 or 60. It is uh, actually a little bit confusing for me. So can you show me the differences between uh, a photo print on the uh, normal photographic paper and the one that printed on Zoll paper? If you know the technique, you can print in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. On Zoll, you print in one hour. Prepare the paper and print the, and print the picture. And after, five days to wait, mm. that you have four, four layers. Mm. It is very long to dry, and you can only know what is a definitive picture only four or five days after. There are subjects for Zaiso. Some pictures on Zaiso, this picture on Zaiso is not very good. This picture is a game with the colors. 
and you want the colors strong. Like this one. Like this one. And on Zhao, not. Mm -hmm. Zhao is uh, something very delicate, mm. very subtle. And you, uh, Zhao needs time, needs time to be looked. This subject, very, the portrait, the, it, is, it is very delicate. Too. The Zhao is good. You see, mm. the face goes fine. Mm. The face goes fine. And uh, uh, all over is not too strong, so the colors here don't kill the face. But you have the texture of the skin and the texture of the paper becomes the same. That's the quality of the Zhao. You can keep contrast and you have many details. Mm. Keep the sweetness of the picture. During about 10 years living in Vietnam, Daniel Friedman has traveled across Vietnam to take photos. Around two dozens of photo books published and several photo exhibitions held in Vietnam and France are the results. Je me baladais sur l'avenue, le cœur ouvert à l'inconnu. J'avais envie de dire bonjour à n'importe qui. The latest exhibition was held in Paris in December 2016, showcasing nearly 200 photo works by Daniel. job and I take picture of his hard job so he's smiling he's thinking I am crazy probably thinking I am crazy but he doesn't know what is in my head so he's he's astonished and he continues he continues to work that's the way of taking picture <laughs> Daniel Friedman is now in the middle of creating a patchwork, or a giant photo comprised of many mosaics capturing people doing hard jobs like this guy on the street. So far, the French photographer has taken about a thousand pictures on this topic. This is a way for him to show respect for those people with hard jobs. Daniel Friedman has documented the many changes in the country that have occurred over the years. Through his lens, Vietnam does not only have beautiful girls in our side, Hoan Kim Lake, peach blossom flowers, and people's smiles. There are much more than that. It is the daily lives of ordinary yet interesting peoples that we randomly meet on the streets. been traveling to many lesser known places across Vietnam through the lens of French photographer Daniel Frischmann and it's now time as always for time out. Many say motorbikes are a part of Vietnam's culture. Ever since the first motorbikes were imported, the lives of local people have centered around them. And for tourists visiting Vietnam, few things are more adventurous, more authentic, and more Vietnamese than traveling around the country with a motorbike. To many, this was an unforgettable memory and an opportunity not to be missed. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. You don't know much about Vietnam. You've never ridden a bike before. So how do you start your own motorbike trip? Well, fear not, because today in this edition of Time Out, I will show you everything you need to know in order to start your own motorbike adventure in Vietnam. The most important thing before taking any motorbike trip is making sure you are legal. Vietnam now accepts International Driving Permit or IDP, 
so if you have one of those for motorbikes, you are good to go. If you don't have a license, however, you can still ride a 50cc bike with no problems. Once you've got all the papers, it is time to find a motorbike. I am on Chuha Street, which is also known as the Motorbike Street of Hanoi. This is where you can find thousands of bikes for only as cheap as $200. Today we're visiting Ming's Motorbike Rental and Sales Shop, a popular destination for backpackers. Ming has been running the place for years. I have many kinds of motorbikes, like the manual, semi-automatic, automatic, just mini scooter. Many, many kinds for the foreigner, high scooter in the city is the number one. So it's for the experienced man, he can use manual or semi-automatic, because it's very reliable and stronger enough for to come up the hill on the route of Vietnam. So if I want a bike that can go all around Vietnam, it's cheap and also reliable, what would you recommend? For me, I think it's better is to ride the manual like the wind. Because the wind is strong enough, reliable, it's easy to fit everywhere. I climb the hill very, very small. With his advice, I decided to go for a Honda Wind. It has a luggage rack to put my backpack on and it's only $250. Each bike comes with a registration paper, bungee cords, and a free helmet. Thank you. Now that I've got a bike, it is time for the second step, shopping for gears. There are many places around Hanoi where you can find what you need for your trip. But the place that you can find everything gathered is Tien Street aka the city's flea market. The vendors sell everything from old to new. You may be able to find some very nice things at a bargain price, but negotiating is a must. For a bike trip, you will need some basic repair tools, something to carry and cover all your stuff when it rains. So after a lot of walking around, and a lot of haggling. Here's what we managed to find. A tool bag for $15. A raincoat for 50 cents. A tire repair kit for $5. A saddlebag for $15. And a used tent for $10. In total, everything costs less than $50, which I think is a fair price. I'm practically done preparing. The last part is finding out where to go. I head to a motorbike tour service called Viet Trails, who takes tourists on motorbike trips for a living. They will be able to recommend some good locations around Vietnam, starting from the top. Miền Bắc chúng ta thì có rất nhiều điểm đến. Tuy nhiên Hà Giang là một trong những điểm rất là tuyệt vời. Buổi sáng sớm thì sương mù bao vây, bao phủ toàn bộ rừng núi rồi con đường ra đi. Mà sương tan thì ánh nắng mặt trời chiếu xuống thì nó hiện lên một phong cảnh rất là đẹp, hữu tình. À, về phía miền Trung hoặc là miền Nam, à, họ cũng có những cái đặc sản riêng, đặc sản về văn hóa, đặc sản về phong cảnh. Thì với tôi thì đèo Hải Vân là một trong những con đèo tuyệt vời nhất mà chúng tôi đã từng trải nghiệm. À, trong năm qua thì bọn tôi cũng đi mấy chuyến xuyên Việt. There are many other beautiful sites all across Vietnam. Ming recommends taking the Ho Chi Minh Trail instead of the National Highway to see them all. With fewer people, it's much easier to find a quiet place to set camp and enjoy the motorbike trip like it was meant to be. Các bạn đi mà các bạn có thể dừng lại bất cứ chỗ nào các bạn muốn, các bạn ăn bất cứ cái đặc sản nào mà các bạn muốn khám phá rồi các bạn thậm chí trải nghiệm ở trong những cái nhà dân rất là tuyệt vời. Ở đó nó có những cái sự hiếu khách và rất là ấm lòng với tình người. Thì đó là ý nghĩa của những cái chuyến phượt. Vương also gave me some tips for the trip. Like changing the engine oil every 300 kilometers, how to adjust the carburetor and told me to always drive safely. If your bike is well maintained, you can sell it back after the trip and even make a profit. It doesn't take a lot to prepare for a motorbike trip. 
both the bike and I are ready to set out for our own adventure. Those were all the advices we have. The rest is up to you. So what are you waiting for? Come to Vietnam and enjoy the beauty of this country yourself. See you next time on Time Out. This segment of Time Out has just wrapped up this episode of Expert Living. If you would like to provide feedback or comment on anything you see in our program, feel free to email to us at vtvinternational at vtv.vn. You can also log on to vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Thank you very much for being with us. This is Expert Living on VTV International.